This presentation will discuss in detail how materials get in and out of cells. You should remember from learning about cells in our cell unit that materials pass in and out of a cell through the cell membrane. In plant cells, the cell membrane is located right inside the cell wall. In animal cells, the cell membrane is the only outer covering that the cell has to protect it. Cells are selectively permeable. Some things can pass through the membrane while others can't. This is called selective permeability. Selective means the cell chooses, or it's chosen. Uh, something that's selected is chosen. Permeable means porous, something that allows gases or liquids to pass through it. So how do cells select what to allow to pass through the membrane? So there's different methods. Passive transport. When dissolved materials pass through a cell membrane without using any energy, that is passive transport. Passive means it doesn't use its energy. Transport means to move. So there's two main different ways that things move through passive transport. One is diffusion and the other is osmosis. So diffusion is when you think about molecules of something moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if you spray some air freshener or perfume, you might think about that as filling the air of a room. Here's a good video that demonstrates diffusion. So if you think about spraying a bottle of perfume in a room, you can see that the perfume particles are distributed throughout the room over time. They diffuse. So they're moving from the perfume bottle and out into the room, an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The same thing can happen when you add something like food coloring to a bottle of water. The food coloring moves from high concentration in the drop to low concentration, so it diffuses throughout the bottle. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane. So osmosis is a little bit different from diffusion in that osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules and diffusion is any kind of particle that moves from high concentration to low concentration. You might think of osmosis in terms of plant cells. When there's a lot of water outside the plant cell, the, cell, the water moves into the cell and the cell will swell and get larger with, as it fills with water. If there's a lower water concentration outside of the cell, the water will move out, moving from the high concentration in the cell to the low concentration out, and the cell will shrink this might give a plant a wilted look. Active transport is a little bit different from passive transport. Active transport is the movement of materials through a cell membrane using energy. You can remember these two types of transport by the name, active uses energy and passive does not. Some examples of active transport include when a cell has to transport food from outside the cell and move them in. Another example is transport by engulfing. Sometimes a cell has to engulf or surround a material, like when a white blood cell has to eat something dangerous like a bacteria. The white blood cell surrounds the bacteria and creates a vacuole to digest it. This movement requires energy, so it's called active transport. So why are cells so small? This is another concept that I want you all to think about. If you think about cell structure, think about the distance between the cell membrane and the nucleus and the, all the organelles that are floating in. When the cell is very small, that distance for materials to travel back and forth through the cell is very quick. The distance is very small, so the, the things will move very quickly. This is the most efficient way of doing these cell processes. This concludes our discussion of selective permeability, passive transport, active transport, and then the two types of passive transport, which are diffusion and osmosis.